continue what I've been trying to say on the last, on the Sunday of the week. Normally, I teach people as if I'm teaching all the people that understand they have a calling on their lives. So I normally teach people as if they're ministers because you are. You are called to do something in the body of Christ, and you need to find out what that something is. Find out what your purpose is. If you don't know what your purpose is, sometimes the reason you're so sad because you're not fulfilling your divine destiny. So I need to know what it is I'm in the body for, what I'm on this planet for. I'm here to answer somebody's problem, so I need to find out where that person, where that problem is, and begin to fulfill that particular need. First Peter, Second Peter, one ten. I want to go there and talk to you, teach you, help you, release you, anoint you, push you, thrust you, chunk you into your destiny. <laughs> Second Peter one ten. Second Peter one ten. Let's let's. You, you need to know what you, you, you call, it's very, very important that I understand, especially in these times, I've, I've been thinking a lot about certain things that happened in my own life and, and, and come to the conclusion that God just knows what he's doing. I've learned to look at what's happening and say there's purpose in it, even if I don't understand it. And one thing I understand is whatever the purpose is, it's always going to end up, end up right. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever you're going through, at the end of it, you're going to be rejoicing and say, Dog! I was so stupid! I don't know why I wouldn't trust in God. He was up to something and I didn't even know it. Because <laughs> I got to understand his divine purpose. And God has, I was talking to this uh, gentleman Sunday, and some things he was saying going on to his life, on, on his life, and I just encouraged him real good. I said, "Happen to make you pray." You know, you get so careless. Days go by. You say, "Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these grits, and thank you for this egg and this toast." And don't even really get into deep prayer. But there's some things that can happen in your life and make you call him all day. And while you calling him about that, he fixed that that you weren't even thinking you was. And if you pray in the Holy Ghost, you get there quicker. Because in the Holy Ghost, I'm praying the right thing at the right time. And when I'm praying in English, I spent, you spend weeks praying about something that ain't even the real reason. It ain't even about that. So I just discovered that whatever's happening, God's got that thing and he knows what he's doing. And, it, and the whole thing has to do with my call and my purpose on this earth. God has already fixed some stuff to fix you so that you'll be fixed for your purpose. And all you do when you beg out of it is just stand the process. So you might as well say, let's get this over with. If, you're gonna, if, if I got two teeth to me to be pulled, numb me one time, pull both of them things at the same time, so there's one pain. So go ahead. God said, get it all, God, now. So I want to deal with the same thing next year. Somebody said, God, you know what you're doing. Come on. You got this. I don't like the ride, but it's going to be all right. You ain't got the lie and say, I'm enjoying it. No, just tell the truth. I don't like what I'm going through, but it's going to turn out all right. I'm going to laugh at the end. I know that. Oh, sometime in the middle of, of you bothering, oh, there's, there's a deep joy inside of your spirit, and, and you rebuke it because you don't understand it. Anybody know what I'm at? You don't understand it. Somebody said, oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you didn't mean to laugh, but there's something deep down inside of you that tells you you're coming out of this. <laughs> and there's something deep down inside of you that I'm coming out of it. It won't be long before I come out of it either. Because God's got purpose. It's fixed. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I just determined he's got it. If I give it to him. The only way he got it in control, now you give it to him. Because I'm, I'm dust, but I'm divinity too. Because he breathed into man, into dust, divinity. So I'm dust and divinity. And I ain't from here. You ain't from here. The real you is what? Spirit. So tell somebody, I'm from heaven. <laughs> I'm from heaven. <laughs> That's why I act like this. I'm from heaven. That's why stuff that used to bother me don't bother me no more because I'm from heaven. This Hebrew 11 says, I'm just a prig. I'm just a stranger traveling through. But in the kingdom of God, I try to make this, you know, you're an ambassador. Ambassadors go to another country 
to do what? I'm to represent their country. I'm down here in earth, which ain't my real place, doing what? Represent my country. My country's in heaven. So if you see me smile in the midst of trouble, it's because in my country, I got a message that says it's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me read this because I'm getting excited here. I get my own self happy. I done learned how to do it. You know, when I was younger than the Lord, I'd be down all week. Then I went to three days, two days. Then I got for a few hours. This, like David said, I'm a worshiper. Just, just give me something to worship with. And I get my own self happy. I get my own self up. Just give me a minute. Because you learn worshipers know how to do that because they always got a song on their heart. People that ain't worshipers have a problem. They don't know how to get it together. But you, we got to learn. Who, you got to learn who to talk to when you're going through too. And y'all know who not to talk to when you're going through. Don't tell me you don't. You know who not to call when you're going through. You know who always got a problem. Uh, 2 Peter 1.10. Even Jesus himself to deal with problems all day. He said, Jesus went away in that, uh, alone. Leisure. It's them kept following him. He was trying to go be alone and relax. Jesus just wanted some time for John to lay on his chest. He, he, he was, remember, he was 100% man also. So Jesus needed to know he was loved. So he wanted John on his chest saying, I just love you. I ain't going to betray you. All of us need to be loved. That part of him, that man, was needing to be loved. All right. Therefore, brethren, be more, be more diligent. Be more diligent. Work on your calling. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to talk about this and talk about church a little bit, I think. I'm here again with all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, ten. Work on your calling. Now, I got to understand. Let, let me finish reading it first. Finish reading it first. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Wait, we just said work on your calling. We didn't finish it, did we? No, work on your, make your call and election make sure. Make your call and your election, and your election sure. sure. Your call means your invitation. It's also the word summoned. I've been called. Somebody said, I've been called. I've been called. And I love the Lord. I may not act like it sometimes. Come on. But I love the Lord. So everything has purpose in my life. Everything. All the bitter, all the, all this. Okay. And read it again. Now, the word, now I'm going to deal with the word call, the word election, because the word election means to be picked out. The word church, ecclesia, means to be picked out. To be picked out from the bunch, to represent the bunch. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Psalms. I mean, not Psalms, I'm sorry. Genesis 45, 10. I, I didn't get to go in this like I went through Sunday. I want to do this because as a called person into the body of Christ, one of your jobs is to help make disciples. If you don't know the purpose of the, of the worship services, you can't help other people. One particular time, they said to Jesus, let's send the people away to get bread. And Jesus said, you feed them. You never send people away from the bread to get bread. People so never leave the worship service to recover. God never tells people he commanded to gather, not to gather. He never speaks to somebody and take a break from church. Never. Not if it's the same God, the same yesterday, day, and forever. He never tells people to take a break from the gathering. Had a lady tell us one time, God told me to take two years off. No, he did not. <laughs> Look here. You, you, serve, you, you, you serve God, but there's a real devil that does, he's very skilled at what he does. And all that, all that the enemy does, the enemy does, he does not blind your eyes. He blinds your mind. 2 Corinthians 2, I think, 2 Corinthians 2, 4, 4, 4, something. He blinds your what? Mind. All he got to do is shut down how I think and make me think something that God is not saying. He never tells me it, it's like fish get picked off easier when they're not in the group. If I'm away from the group to recover, I can't recover without the body. There's a law of degeneration, Jeremiah. Anything left alone deteriorates, degenerates. Children that's left alone get insolent. If I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
their behavior gets a certain way. A child left himself brings shame. A flower cannot maintain alone. Need to be talked to. Need to be watered. A house without somebody living in it goes down quickly. Life has to be in it. No person in the body of Christ without the gathering can be healthy. You will deteriorate gradually without un realizing how far you've fallen away from God all the time thinking that I'm, I'm still with God. I know a particular fellow in Tallahassee that a uh, friend of Marcus's, his relative of Marcus's, that calls him. He won't come to church, but he calls. And religion has taught him that if I talk about God, and even if I'm reading something that don't make no sense, that God, I'm all right with God. I don't go to church, but I believe in God. But I can't do that because I disobey the king because I've been summoned to gather. There is no way you should feel comfortable outside of worship. If the worshiper is inside of you, there's something that draws you. You cannot be all right. Your mind has to be blinded to the things of God to not feel convicted when you ain't in worship. Help me, Jesus. We'll talk about that some more. Genesis 45, 10. The Jews used to take olive oil and put on the tongue, the palate of the ch children so they were long for Jerusalem. There's something about when you, when the, when you get born again, that something inside of you that just draws you to the right company. There's something that makes you want to play worship songs. There's something about you that makes you want to say, thank you, Jesus. There's something about you sometimes that makes you get caught up and make your bed shake and quiver at late at night because the Holy Ghost gets on you and you realize, hey, my spirit's in touch with him. <laughs> Although my mind may get a little messed up, my spirit's hooked on him. And when I say I'm going to stay home, I'm tired. There's a drawing inside of me that comes from God. Sometimes the only way I find an answer is in the gather corporate gathering. Because some stuff can't happen unless I'm in worship. And as a believer, I have to know that because I have to help people understand, no, God did not tell you to stay out of worship. And it always gets me when people can go to work sick and can't come to church with a headache. It explains something about maybe you need to reconnect with him because you ain't got him just right. Oh, Lord. And TV doesn't get it because that ain't gathered. There's nobody at the house when the TV is on to talk to me. And we're supposed to bring a song and a hymn. So when I watch TV, I don't have a song and a hymn that I bought. Okay, we'll read. We'll read. We'll read. I didn't mean to say I'm going to say all this, but I'm just sharing with you out of my worship, out of my time with God. In the last few weeks, I've been trying to get this over, that we, we got to understand and help people understand, no, you've been called, chosen, picked out. The same word for chosen is, is, a, is a form of the word ecclesia. Handpicked, one scripture says, you have been handpicked by God. <laughs> handpicked to be here. You did not, I don't care what you think, you did not make up your mind to just be saved. It, somebody in your family not saved because they ain't been handpicked. And you one and trying to get them saved, but it just ain't the season yet. Although sometimes people fall away from God, there are some people that just cannot get to him yet because he ain't got he hadn't put his hand on them. The pressure of God hadn't been on them yet, like on you. But he got you to get them. But if you don't understand when people tell you, I don't have to go to church, he's in me. When you don't understand, no, the, the definition of the word says that's not true. We are lively stones, a royal what? That word royal is the word kingly, a riga, which is the word, same word for dominion, which is the same word for king, dumb. It's a kingdom word. I've been called to be a king. When you show up, the government of God shows up because you are called out for government business. You've been handpicked for the government of God. So when you show up, you carry the government of God. If you carry the government of God in your house, no demon should be able to abide. If I cast out demons by the finger of God, there is the key.